If you want to see more videos and interviews like this from influential people in tech, finance, and sports, subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the bell to be alerted. And go a step further and join the YouTube and membership area for early releases of videos like this. I'm out of here. Ha! And we are live. All right, it's your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another kicking it session. Today I've got Chris Barnes on with me. He was actually the winner of the Eden on EOS. Uh, election test trial election we did a few weeks ago um he reached out to me i said absolutely would love to have him on you know just to, to discuss the whole experience i went through it um i really enjoyed it i got to i think the second round and there were some people that were way more qualified than me to continue on but this guy made it all the way to the top in one which is insane um <laughs> great to have you on chris Thanks for joining me today. How are you? Uh, I'm excellent, man. It's a privilege and an honor to be on with you. I, I watch a lot of your stuff, so uh, it's it's cool to have randomly kind of won this trial thing, and now I get Great. to be on some of these shows where I like, would listen to people, and now I get to talk. Yeah, so you're I, the I, I appreciate of you on. now, right? You're the star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no pressure, right? I get the opportunity to sort of prove if this thing uh, actually selected for trust or not, right? Which is yep. sort of how I view it. Yeah, absolutely. So to give people some backdrop, because, you know, EOS is so misunderstood. I just got off a live stream and we were talking about, you know, EOS. And there were a whole bunch of hex people in there. They were chilling hex <laughs> and all these various coins. And they're like, well, EOS is a is a shit coin. It went from twenty dollars all the way to one dollar. I'm like, you're missing the point. You're, you're focusing on price. And this yeah. is more about functionality. And yeah. we're missing that in the space. But can you explain to people who may not be aware of the whole EOS ecosystem, the EOS IO ecosystem, which we uh, at EOS Detroit are very involved in in various blockchains, um, kind of explain what EOS is and then talk about your background, how you found you know EOS and how you landed where you are with this, uh, this community. Yeah. Okay. So I know it's a good, lot. But. Yeah. All right. All right here, we'll we'll nail this out one at a time. So in terms of like, like cryptocurrency is such an emergent new thing. Like anybody who's into this, at first you're probably very skeptical because you're thinking magical internet money. How can that actually have value? I can't touch it. So it's not intuitive to people. And and now you see the like, where does this value come from? Is it from a meme? I mean, look at Dogecoin. That was yep. deliberately invented to be a joke. And now it's worth dozens of billions of dollars because of celebrity status and the ability of meme to capture attention. So is that true value? Is that, is that where if you were to play this out long term and you really are objective about this, do people really think that the true value is going to be found in memes? I mean, memes are a form of communication and communication certainly carries value, but that's just like, that's not what crypto is about. Crypto is this huge revolution in, in technology. It's, it's the invention of digital scarcity. Digital scarcity didn't exist prior to Bitcoin, verifiably trustless digital scarcity. And, and now you don't need to rely on a third party, a corporation that issues a token or, or like a, a key to run your software. That's still not digitally scarce because that company can print as many keys as they want. This is the invention of digital scarcity. So where does the value going to aggregate over time? It's anyone's best guess. But like you're saying, what's special about EOS is the technology behind EOS. The EOS blockchain, EOS IO software is arguably the most performant software, blockchain software that's currently available with human readable names, built in multi-sig, multi-signature capability. So you can have more flexibility with your permission structures. I mean, it uses C++, which is a very well-known and old computer language. So a lot of developers should be able to move into EOS a far lot easier than learning um, Ethereum. What's that one called? Solidity. Yeah, right? Solidity. You got to learn a whole new... So, so it, it, to me, it, we're still so early in the crypto game. And yes, there's first mover advantage. And yes, there's a lot of hype surrounding memes. But the true value, as I see it, will aggregate just like it did in early internet between Alta Vista and web crawler yep. and, and Google won the day. And why did Google win? Because they provided the most performant search engine. So and the technology know, in, in tech, Chris, um, first mover advantage is typically not the winner. It's an 80% failure rate on the first person or first tech company that comes out with something new. 
it's it's it, you know it's just yeah. is i don't know why it's like that in tech but so people have to remember that you know bitcoin ethereum and all these first mover advantage technology stacks i don't think will be the the winner in, in the end take I'm 10 years out I'm with you, which is why I, I was in a Genesis EOS holder because I recognized the power of this tech and that it was a long-term play about this final aggregation of value and not just this current flavor of the day. Let's see if we can make a bunch of money and fill our bags. Like that'll work short term, but eventually someone's going to be a bag holder. Uh, right. You know, so so I, personally, I I'm that's why I've been committed to EOS through all the FUD, yeah. through all the. I mean, this stuff's emergent things. And one of the biggest issues that Eden now might actually be able to solve is the block, the governance of blockchains. Yeah. And, you know, how did the rules come into play and who arbitrates? EOS, what's cool about EOS that I liked about it too, is this, this whole debate of code is law versus the intent of code is law. Yeah. And in the real world, intent matters a whole lot, sure right? Does. Like it. So it's, it, it, and I, it, the fact that this blockchain can help emulate real world scenarios, the question is, how do you arbitrate on the intent of code? Who gets to make that decision? Th yeah, yeah, that is what was intended with this code, and that is an obvious violation of the intent. Therefore, let's reverse a transaction, move, change account keys, move funds. That's tricky in the kind of more old school code is law ideology but when we're trying to apply blockchain to everything in the world property ownership real life property if you have real life property that's represented via digital token and someone hacks your digital token how did they take the real life I mean, how do you reconcile that problem right. and you can't on bitcoin but you can on eos and then it begs the question who arbitrates who do you trust to make this decision and this is where eden i i've now totally falling in love with this Eden process because the process itself, as I see it, selects for trust. It's a process that allows us to, like Satoshi, when he first released his white paper, he says basically that, you know, he introduces Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer cash um, with the point, uh, and it basically removes any trusted third party. The key there is the trust, right? We don't trust these third parties, these financial uh, legacy institutions and monetary systems. We don't trust them anymore. So how do we solve the trust problem? And now, we have a, instead of a trustless solution like Bitcoin is, trust is a part of the real world that we live in. We live in communities. That is, is the foundation of a community is to be able to trust each other. Um, so this now gives us an opportunity to apply a trust layer to what previously was deliberately a trustless system. Yeah, we tried earlier in the early days of um, EOS, the ECAF, and all those other attempts at this. What makes the Eden approach better in your opinion um over our previous attempts at this governance model uh, yeah great question uh, to me the the fundamental problem with ecaf uh was that who so ecaf was the eos io core arbitration forum and that was something if people don't know was sort of tied into the original rollout of eos that mm -hmm. was meant to have this governance governance layer and the ability to arbitrate on intent of code disputes so that's a big bag, right? You, you, could, you could argue I, I screwed up and lost my keys and the code didn't want me to lose my keys, so help me fix my problem. Okay, maybe, but that's going to be difficult to, to enforce and uh, how many people are having this problem and is that really worth the time of the block producers to really get involved as opposed to here's a $14 million hack and a lot of user funds have been stolen. Maybe that's a good time to jump in and arbitrate on this intent of code issue. So the question about ECAF was, who are the arbiters? Who, who gets to be this trusted entity that we're all going to trust? And this is a trustless environment filled with people who have issues with trust, which and, and justifiably so. I was one of them. So um, so I, Eden, as the and we can talk about how why I think this is, but Eden solves for trust. That is what I think. The, Dan's book, More Equal Animals, um, which you, you can go to moreequalanimals.com and he's got a free PDF that people can read. Of course, you can buy the paperback. But he basically goes through the issues with the current democratic system or democracies in general, and which is really just a way of saying, how do we select our leaders? How do we select representatives? Um, and that applies to how do you select who arbitrates on intent of code? Like it's a selection process in the end. And Eden is a process that allows you to take a community and then select from within that community who are the trusted individuals. Um, and, and that's revolutionary. This is, you know, and it, 
yeah, it's certainly emergent. And I was just a member of the trial Eden run. Like I'm not an official representative of Eden. I'm a member of Eden on EOS, but I don't represent them. I'm just a, a dude part of it who happened to win this trial election. So there's lots of, you know, lots of iterations, but I think I'm trustworthy. <laughs> Am I, I'm biased, of course. So, uh, you know, I think it worked so far, but we've yeah. got lots of trial so runs to go. Let, let's talk about, I want to back up though and, and talk about more you and, and your background and what led you to cryptos in general. Kind of give us your, your backstory. Yeah, sure. Um, so let's see, I'm a small town Canadian guy, grew up in a small town. Um, I, I, I have uh, an inclination to wanting to trust people at first because that's how I feel. I don't know. I don't know if it's how Canadians a Canadians do, right? <laughs> I, I, I think it might be a small town thing. I don't know if it's so Maybe. much a Canadian thing or just yeah. if you grew up in a small community <laughs> and you're used to this idea of like repercussions for being a right. poor social actor in your town. Like yep. the, the, the problem of I, society today is filled with these huge cities and this digital interaction where anonymity and pseudonymity. Mm -hmm. pseudonymity can rule the day and you can get away with being a jerk anytime you want because there's no direct social repercussion you're on a highway and someone cuts you off and you give them the finger it's like that doesn't really change they can just be an asshole all day when they're driving who cares but if you're in a small town and you know that guy right. he's gonna maybe pay a price like you pay a price for breaking trust and being disingenuous and dishonest and i think small town growing up growing up in a small town has absolutely affected my disposition and certainly my preference for interacting with people i i, I find a lot more joy out of treating people like this small town like i care about you actually do because you're a, you know a fellow human and you're part of my tribe that's meaningful and that's lost in a lot of society society today um, anyway so small town um i won't go too far back but anyway i got into crypto in in 2013 december 2013 i heard andreas antonopoulos on the joe rogan podcast oh, I uh in, and i got in in 2013 march yeah yeah, well, so this was me. I was later than you. Then you, you caught you were before bit. that big that big wave. Yeah, and we're pumped up to a thousand US. Yep. So I was listening yep. to to Andrea. I was I remember it clear. I'm renovating in my I was renovating my bathroom. So I'm you know working away with the headphones on. And I'm like, listen, this is amazing. So along, it's an interesting story about where I went from there. But bottom line, I uh, I really gravitated to Andreas's topic and and sort of lines about uh, banking the unbanked and yep. and um, just this disintermediating these sort of legacy institutions that are, you know, using the Cantillon effect and siphoning off yeah. funds uh, where it drips out. So I, I totally gravitated to all that being, um, you know, a, a libertarian minded, I suppose, where I believe in individualism and, and you know, choice and, and taking responsibility for yourself. So that got me into Bitcoin. I was a, I went to the Bitcoin Expo in Toronto in 2014, um, where Ethereum was basically launched. And uh, I hated it. I, I, I didn't, it, just like Bitcoin's hard to get your mind around it. I didn't wrap my mind initially around this idea of programmable blockchain. Yeah, I was I just late was... with Ethereum as well. I was actually late to Ethereum because uh, I didn't grasp it. I was all all in on Bitcoin. And it, like yeah. you said, it took kind of a, it was a barrier to entry on and, and from the mind perspective to even grasp the Bitcoin one. So yeah, the Ethereum took it a step further. <laughs> but it, it was also the pre-mine. I was not a fan of, of the pre-mine that came with oh, Ethereum. Oh, so, right. so that... you're an OG crypto guy. So you remember like back in the day, Bitcoin forms, you know, the new coin would come out and that's that was a big faux pas. You, you, a pre-mine yeah. coin? No. No, no, no one's no, not touching allowed. that. Yep. Yeah. You're right. So you're it right. turned me off Ethereum. I, I didn't know Ethereum. I still today, now that I'm so into EOS, I'm like, whatever. I'm just, I, yeah. not that I'm a... I just, I just not going to go there. I just, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm focused on EOS and that's where my passion is. And I'm okay to accept my loss opportunity from not right. having Ethereum. Right. So yeah, 2017 when EOS was, I didn't follow Dan Larimer. I didn't know of him, but then I learned of EOS and really the reason, not only the, the, the functionality and programmability and performance of that he was promising, but just his personal, I believed him in his mission of, of wanting to secure life, liberty, property, and justice for all. And that's something that I personally can small town gravitate to. And like, I, I really attached to that message that drew me even more into the token and wanting to be a supporter. Um, and so I've been involved and, and a, a 
you know, a lurker in the EO space. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't code. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a, I worked in renewable power generation for 12 years running and managing industrial wind and solar facilities. So, you know, I, I'm not a coder. So yeah. what can I do in EOS? How can I contribute? And then all of a sudden this Eden thing came along and it's like, ah, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. And, mm-hmm. you know, here I am in an opportunity now, a random dude with no other coding skills actually given an opportunity to contribute to the community and the ecosystem. So it's pretty humbling and an awesome, I, I, you know, when yeah. you, you talk about life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, and all that good stuff, and that whole a lot of the libertarian ethos, I didn't even realize that Dan was that way until I saw him on um, Jeff Birick. Do you know yeah. him? Jeff Berwick, Anarchist. yeah, yeah, yeah. When sure I do. saw that interview, Chris, I was like, oh, yeah, this. And, and I was already a supporter of EOS prior to that because I knew, like, the DPOS consensus algorithm, I was using Steam. So okay. I heard that, you know, they were taking a lot of the code from Steam to, you know, create this EOS platform. But when I heard that, I was like, oh, yeah, this guy is, this is the guy. You know, he's he's the truth, yeah. you know. So, yeah, I'm with you. I think there are two people in cryptos today that are very misunderstood. And um, how can I put this? not appreciated and, and and one is dan Lammer and i think the other is andreas antonopoulos to be honest with you he's i mean people know him um uh, both of them but i don't think they get enough credit for the, the things they've done in the space you might be right i i i think dan is probably the least credited of the two i think yep. andreas I has done well i've seen, seen him in lots of stuff and and yeah, he's, he's a great speaker and he gives, I mean, the fact he can give speeches without notes and he's just so good, you know, yeah. the guy's, the guy's awesome. And Dan, Dan is also great not to, but just Andreas is a very powerful speaker. Um, and, uh, I don't, Dan has just not gotten the recognition yet. No. I think his day's coming. This is a long game. And, uh, obviously the guy, not only has he created bit shares D5 before it was a thing yep. right in 2016 or whatever. And then he's done steam it the first social media platform to reward users, like obviously cutting edge ahead of its time. Um, and now he's created this Eden process, which isn't even a blockchain. I mean, the, the irony is the guy's mind is obviously like, it's very, the guy's genius. Like, the, so is. the Eden thing, <laughs> his day will come, his day in the sun will deservedly come, um, when he gets to be properly recognized for his contributions to humanity. And I think that this Eden thing, we're going to, we're my make it kick ass on EOS, like let's fix EOS and show that it works and like really deliver to the EOS ecosystem. And that is like trial one, really, of, of what this Eden process does. Then, uh, you know, something like you figure it's an, there is an app, like it is tied into the EOS blockchain. There is signatures and it obviously it's, it's wrapped into it for verifiability. But uh, so that just makes it perfect for something like Telos or some of the EOS IO sister chains to, why don't you guys, because this isn't exclusive to EOS. No. It's just being run out, like rolled out on EOS. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fan of Telos and with their attempt at governance. I've been a fan of theirs for quite some time. Had co-founder on so many times uh, on my show. It doesn't make sense. Douglas Horn, that's my guy. <laughs> but, uh, what made you even uh, want to participate in the trial run? So kind of explain first, because I'm kind of talking like everyone knows. Most of my audience doesn't. They don't know what this whole trial run was. Explain that for us and explain like the actual real trial that we're going to have once we get i think a thousand members or something just go through that whole sure thing yes so it all started with dan's book that laid the foundation of this political playoff it's kind of like a game in a way it's a game to select from a pool of people your representatives or your leaders um and so i my person i I happened to be laid off from my job in fact uh a few weeks in advance of this so i just had the time it took a, a full day on a weekday and I was like, okay, I'll sign up. It was just open. Anybody, it was announced, I think, in Telegram, I heard about it. And anybody who could, who wanted to, could participate. It didn't require membership for these trial runs. Um, So you basically just signed up. And there was a 1,000 EOS prize given to the winner, which was at the time about 10 grand. And um, so I just signed up along with 63 other people who showed up on the day. Uh, So what was 64? Um, So there were... 64 participants on, on this trial run that anybody, so your listeners who were like, this sounds interesting. I don't know about joining some club. Well, you don't need to. Uh, the next trial run is going to be Saturday, July 17th. 
um, at about noon. So it's a, you know, that'll be open to people who aren't members, people, people in your community here who are curious, uh, you know, follow the links and, and sign up for the next trial run and you can participate too. And it'll be a 2000 EOS prize for that one. Plus the only challenge here is uh, you'll need an EOS account because we are going to do, I think they're going to do, I say we, they are going to do uh, one EOS per person entrance fee just to ensure that people show up when they say they're going to show up. Uh, and that'll just add to the prize pool. Um, and then, yeah, the, the game ensues and we can explain how that works, but the game yeah. ensues and, and you, you, people select their reps and it, you move up through like a playoff type of ladder system and you end up with a last group of people which are sort of referred to as the board, um, but they're not the official final board yet. They're just a mock board. And then uh, there's a winner selected from there. The Satoshi is the name and those people get some EOS and they can spend it how they said they'd spend it. Um, and the intention, of course, is this is it's around EOS. So, yeah, you know, if members, uh, if people are listening who aren't into EOS at all, okay, this may not be the right time because it's deliberate. Like your, your intention with the funds should be to do something, build something that promotes or supports or encourages uh, the development or just the EOS ecosystem in general, benefits the EOS holders in some way. Yeah. So explain this fractal democracy and how the whole process goes with the Eden. Okay. So th this is my, uh, this is my elevator pitch. So this is my analogy of how this works. So it's, uh, I did, I attempted this once before and I, I failed it and I've done it <laughs> once since. And I, I think this is a better way to do it. So okay. my analogy is uh, referring it. Uh, so thinking of uh, a crash car derby competition. Mm -hmm. So imagine you've got a thousand crash car derby drivers and they were, they're like, like this picture you're showing, those are all cash car derby drivers. And they're like, who's the best one, right? Who's the best crash car derby driver? Well, you can't just throw them all into an arena because then they'll just smash into each other. It takes away from the individual skills to select for the best skilled crash car derby driver. So instead, you randomly sort those thousand crash car drivers into groups of 10, which is what this is showing here. Random groups of 10 get sorted together, and then they play the game, They can, which is selecting for the best crash car derby driver. They smash them up, they do their thing, and one winner will... will and sometimes you might have where no one makes it through because they all die or crash. Uh, but in this case, just assume one winner moves on to the next round fix their cars up. And then that round is then randomized again, because the randomization is key here, right? Yeah. You start with a group of people, a group of members in the community, and they're randomly sorted. So there's no, you don't know who you're going to be with. You, know. yeah. you don't know, you don't need to worry about the platforms. I mean, this is now taking away from Crash Car Derby, but you don't need to worry about the platforms of all thousand people, just your group. You're only worried about your group. So they, they, they compete again. Next winners come out, compete again until you get your last group of 10. And uh, it depends. The grouping sizes can range between four and 12 people, but you compete again and your winner is crowned. And so that's essentially the process um, for, for this. This is meant to be, so that selects for the best, best crash car derby driver where Eden selects for the most trusted, the, the honesty, integrity, transparency, all these characters when you're in your group of so in the mock election, there were four, there were 16 groups of four at the beginning. So we all randomly sorted into our groups and we had to sort of who wanted to move forward, who had an idea that they figured they could use the thousand EOS for, because that was the price for the first one. And if they had a good idea, uh, they would need to convince the others in their group to vote for them, or at least two of them. So you need more than 66% of the people to vote for you and you need to vote for yourself. So three out of four would be 75%. So you need three of that four to vote for one person to move on. Um, and it's basically just a discussion, a 50 minute live recorded video call. That first round occurs simultaneously. So you can't be in two calls at once. Um, you, if, you can't really use sock puppets per se, because they'll need to know what they're saying and they'll need to be able to actually, you don't know if, if you, if you stack this with a bunch of sock puppets, you don't know if you're going to be teamed up with them and then they'll vote right. for you because it's right. random. So you, you basically have to use your powers of consensus building and, and, convince people that you're trustworthy, convince people that your idea is good. They're going to, if they know you, they're going to know your history. If they know you and your history is that you're shady, you're going to have a harder time trying to move on. Right. So, so at, as the consensus is reached 50 minutes later, the winners move on to the next round and they were again, split into groups of four randomly. Those calls took place simultaneously, all recorded on video and all these core. The other cool thing is all the videos are uploaded to IPFS. Right. So, Whatever I said to get myself to win this mock trial is there for review. 
So if you're questioning what I said, or if I was ambiguous, it didn't really commit to anything. Well, I mean, hopefully I don't, but you can, you can check, you can go watch the videos. And if I totally lied to get myself to get the money, money, uh, well, you can call me on it. And if you call me on it and you're loud enough and the rest of the community hears about it, which should be pretty easy, I'm not going to do well in future elections. And I can even just be kicked out of the community. If it turns out I'm not a valuable member, there's no, once I'm in, I don't get to stay in the part of the philosophy in Dan's book is not only can you secede from a community if you so choose, you can leave, but others could also vote to kick you out. There's no guarantee that you get to stay there. Unlike a, you know, a country where you're guaranteed to be a Canadian or an American because I live here, but I could be a total jerk and totally not promoting the ideals and values of my community or my country. Um, in this case, you need to be a, an upstanding member. And if you, if it's proven that uh, you're not, you, you could be kicked out. Um, so yeah, this whole idea of you're going to commit to something, you're convincing others to move up, then you get more people who all want to move up. Because once you get past that first row, because you can participate, this is another important point, people can participate in the election on that first level and have no intention of moving on and receiving funds. They just want to be on that first level to participate in the process and just hear what people have to say, give some of their ideas to the person they're going to move forward, because the person who moves up listened hopefully to what they were the feedback they got from that first group and they take that to the next round and that becomes part of who they're representing not just themselves but the people that helped get them to the next round yeah no, that's yeah. great and you know this process can be applied to governance you know to real world governmental even at the like local municipality level like i can see this this method being utilized off chain uh, oh, yeah. or, or even getting those government agencies and those organizations to use it in an on-chain manner, right? Oh, man. Yeah, th I like the idea. So, you know, cryptocurrencies were sort of invented and they have disrupted the financial and monetary institutions of the world, right? We can all agree with that probably. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, this Eden OS system can disrupt the democratic and governance system of the world. Oh, buddy. That's... That's going to be a dangerous one. We'll see how that pans out. Because, <laughs> it's, it, it's, you know, the system is designed in a way and kept in an antiquated way for a reason. So we'll have to see how we can convince. Maybe it's going to have to come from the local out. That's that's totally. That's yeah. I, the way I see it is I, I, Eden, the Eden process is applicable to all sorts of applications. Anytime you have a hierarchy or a structure where there's leaders or representative, Eden can be applied. So, um and there's, I got a lot, I, I listened to your podcast yesterday uh, with Jimmy D and Corey, the Uplift guys, and uh, oh, yeah. you're mentioning you do some community stuff in Detroit. Yeah. And I was thinking uh, the Eden process can basically entirely disrupt the world of philanthropy. Because right now, um, when you give to charities, we all know that some of the big charities, there's a lot of skimming that happens sure. for the, the bureaucracies and very little money gets to go to the final end community that those funds are intended for. So now people who want to be philanthropic, instead of giving to those organizations, why don't you take a chunk of money that you're going to donate and donate it to a community to run an Eden process to get the members of that community to empower them and explain how this process works, explain how they should kind of prepare their pitch to build a splash pad or new basketball court or mm -hmm. upgrade the library, put in a computer room, whatever, right? Take the $50,000 donation that someone could give and then run an Eden process in a community for the community members themselves to then self-select for who they trust and who they think should receive the money to then empower and improve their own community. Cut out the middleman, disintermediate these these cherry pickers in, in social giving and community organizations and go straight to the community itself. Yeah, that's, I agree, man. I think this is going to be a great move in the right direction for, for humanity to be yeah. honest with you. So I'm excited about it. Um, so you were the winner of this trial run. You were awarded a thousand EOS. Yes. What, what are you going to do with a thousand EOS? Are you going to buy some mining rigs and just make a lot of money and profit? Yeah. And no, I bought a new, I bought a new guitar. You know, <laughs> I got I to gotta write some songs for EOS. Right, close, right, right. There you go. <laughs> no. So, uh, yeah, I, I ended up, I was representing. So when I did this, again, not a coder, had no idea what I was doing. I put up a forum in the EOScommunity.org. There's mm -hmm. a forum there. And I put up a forum post the day before saying, 
hey, I want to participate in this election. I know it's the day before, but I don't know what I want to like try to run for. So anybody looking for potential representatives in Eden, or if you have a project that you think could benefit from the thousand EOS, throw it up there and, uh, and I'll try to represent you. If you go to Eden on EOS, you'll probably be able to find it. But anyway, whatever, it's buried in there by now. So I did, uh, and I read through some of them, and John Heater from Boyd.com, who's mm -hmm. been you know, a faithful EOS yep. IO programmer and involved in the space for a long time, sure. he, he made the EOS IO power-up website yep. to provide free power-ups, which for those who don't understand, it's basically, there's a small amount of EOS that are consumed in a transaction, very, very small, nothing like Ethereum. And, uh, and, but it, you can still run out of, of CPU to perform a transaction. So you can go to this eospowerup.io, enter your account name, and that's it. You just click power up and you'll get a free, uh, you get some CPU. You can do, you know, a couple transactions, um, with that. And, uh, so he did that. He was looking to improve that service by adding a telegram and discord bot. So right in telegram, instead of having to go to the website, someone comes in and says, Hey, I'm stuck. What do I do? You just send them to the bot. They type in their account name and they get powered up there. So they don't have to go to a website. So it just makes it more convenient for users. And uh, so the thousand EOS, it was 900 for, for John for his time to do the coding because the guy's a full stack dev. So he built, you know, builds it from scratch and that's, you know, that's money well spent. Developers need to get paid for their efforts. Um, and then the other hundred EOS was going to go to just adding some EOS to this fund. So there's plenty of EOS to be consumed for free power ups, which by the way, is heavily used in Venezuela. You know, of all the countries that can make use of this, and I'm glad they are, hyperinflationary Venezuela, that's pretty awesome that you can yes. that it's going there. So that's where 100 was going to go. But uh, it turned out, actually, that we, we redirected that 100 to Gray Mass because of the work they do. And that yeah. was because Sharif from EOS Dublin stepped up and he donated uh, from EOS Dublin, donated to the free power up. So that 100 EOS that he donated then allowed us to redirect the 100 EOS to to gray mass so cheers props to those guys right just like eos detroit there's a lot of under recognized bps in this yeah. space and, I, and we'll get to later the power of eden and how with eos governance we can maybe improve some of this bp bp positioning but right. um anyway so yeah that was that uh and when i so when i received when i won i technically could have said send the funds directly to my chris barnes account and you can trust me um, but instead, we, the, the mock board at the end, we built, a, we did an MSEG account uh, mm -hmm. and basically had a three of five vote power required to move funds. So I had a vote power of two and the other three individuals had one. So it'd be either three of them could do a transaction without me or myself and one other person from that group of four could do a transaction. So that's, a, I think, a good precedent is that when you receive funds, they don't just go into one individual who can take off to the Bahamas. It goes into an MSIG, sort of distributing that trust across a couple people, which I think is really important. Um, and then from that MSIG, so that, that account received 1,000 EOS. So far, I've given 450 to John in advance to pay him up front. And then once he's finished the work, we'll pay him the other 450. And uh, we've already given, oh no, I, I messed up my MSIG. I got to still fix the MSIG to uh, the, the transaction to send it to Gray Mass. So that's oncoming. I'll uh, do that this weekend, hopefully. And, uh, and yeah, and so that's that was that. Nice. No, that's great, man. That is awesome. Are you going to participate in the uh, second trial? I think, yeah, I think so. Uh, um, yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, I don't have to, I don't know if I have a project to represent yet. I have a few ideas. I, I, what I'd like to, this is also emergent. There is no rules here, right? Mm -hmm. But I like the idea of putting up a few ideas or having a few people put up ideas again. And then people like myself who aren't sure, just again, represent an idea. And if you trust the people who put up this idea, then represent, represent them. Um, and so like I, what I'd like to see, and this kind of goes into what I mentioned a moment ago about improving the ordering of BPs and how BPs are selected. I'd like to see a proxy, an Eden proxy being created. Um, and a proxy for those who don't know is basically like an aggregator of votes in this delegated proof of stake consensus system where you can, if you're a token holder and you're not really paying attention to what BPs are doing what, but you'd like your tokens to be put to good use in voting in good, you know, good BPs that we want in the ecosystem. We want to get paid and we want to encourage and ones who actually give back and maybe aren't doing vote buying or whatever you, you might uh, feel that is important to you. If you trust Eden, and, and again, I think it selects for trust. Um, if you trust the Eden process, then Eden can create a proxy that people could also trust and let's aggregate community votes. Let's build 
this. Let's take this momentum we have of community building and let's put our tokens where our mouths are and actually like aggregate our vote to maybe influence the order. Like mm -hmm. let's, uh, and, and how that should work. I don't think we should be trusting because there'll be many elections, right? The next trial elections in July, um, the next, the, the first real election will be, it could be months from now. Um, we'll need about a thousand members and there's still a few things to be worked out. But once there's, once an election takes place, the, one of the rules that is ingenious from Dan is the ability to change the rules requires a subsequent election and those, the board there, the winners there have to then ratify the previously introduced rules. Because what happens today is when people get into power, they change the rules so they stay in power, right? right. And it, it, the systems become captured. Yep. So in Eden, there'll be a base set of rules. There's this base thing called a document, very simple, called a peace treaty that everyone agrees to, and they all agree to this basic set of rules. But then on top of that, bylaws can be written. And bylaws can be a little more flowing, and they don't, and, and so they're, they're meant to be more just less restrictive. Um, but easier to change, except, so, so say right now, say it's, I was an official Satoshi of the real thing and I have my board and we want to change some rules about something. So we could propose the rule change to the Eden process or whatever it's going to be, but those rules aren't ratified. They don't become actual rules until another election takes place, which could be, it could be hopefully every six months. We don't want to do them too frequently. Six months to a year, there'd be another election and that then whoever wins there part of what they're running on hopefully would be to whether they agree or disagree with these proposed rule changes. So if they say, I disagree, uh, then, and then and people are, those are bad rules. We don't want those rules. Somebody's trying to change the rules and capture it. Well then hopefully enough people are like, no, no, we don't want people who are going to vote for that. So you vote for people who you trust, hopefully to then not ratify those rules as opposed, or you can say, those are great rules. I'm also running and going to ratify those rules because I believe them to be good rules. And then this, that subsequent election, those get to the top, they can then ratify those rules to make them official. So my thought on the BP piece is Eden, and this is what I would use those funds for, is to basically create a proxy, um, maybe do some uh, uh, what's what, a bount bounties of sorts mm -hmm. to have some suggestions on really important metrics. What, what, what should, how should block producers be measured? Are they missing blocks, you know, latency, technical things I don't know that you would know potentially as a block producer, but then there's also social stuff. Are they available? Do they have a website? Do they communicate to people when they reach out to them? Do and we know where they are? The things that aren't being, they're not being measured. measured. Exactly. Yeah. So if, if Eden can basically create a way to track that some sort of trusted way, either a set of polls or a way to sort of feed in these KPIs and metrics into an algorithmic system that ranks BPs that just does it. So basically the first round of Eden people who in my, in my, this is totally an emergent idea. Like this is not I'm just spitballing, but, and someone else can do this too. It doesn't need to be me. You can take this idea and run with it, like run, pitch, go ahead. I, I don't care. So, uh, but then you'd have a, a fixed set of like a, an algorithm that ranks the BPs and all those who are proxying with the Eden proxy, it just auto votes. So it doesn't matter if, if someone else is voted in and they have a different preference of BPs and they just flip the switch and say, no, no, we're going to vote for this now because I like these guys better for this reason. It needs to be more stable, I think. And then it gives BPs a chance to see what the metrics are and try to improve, right? Ideally, you've got a, a fixed playing field. You're not moving the goalposts all the time. Um, and so, and we, we, and we heavily weight these social um, community metrics that currently aren't getting any weighting at all, it would seem. So if the community can come together and we can really take this this ability to recognize we're starting to get some momentum and we're, we're kind of turning the corner a bit on some of the sentiment negativity from the past. And we really aggregate and we believe this to be, we could, we could change the BP selection potentially and put in people who deserve to be there or at least move them up. I mean, let's move someone's up to a higher paying position. If we can't, yeah. we can't get them in the top 21 because of the collusion that's there. We can sure as heck get them a lot closer and into some more money to then help feed them, keep them going to then give back and, build the community more and expand and aggregate more votes. Like this can be a huge steamroller and actually become what delegated proof of stake, stake was kind of meant to possibly be, right? Yeah. So that's that's what I'd like to see happen maybe as an idea. Yeah, I see why you won the first trial election. <laughs> a great, a lot of great uh, ideas, man. And uh, I think um, you should definitely try for another round and see how things go. Hopefully we get more participants. I was kind of shocked that only 64 showed up to that first trial. So I'm, quite naturally, we'll probably see more the second yeah. go round, And yeah. uh, it's going to be interesting to see how things pan out. Well, Chris Barnes, guys, check him out on Twitter. 
Barnzor. <laughs> Barnzor. Barnzor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have it up on the screen here. Uh, <laughs> check them out there. Are you most active there or on Telegram or where? Yeah, yeah. I, again, I'm not a, I'm not, I don't sell, I'm not selling anything, right? So yeah, I tell Twitter a bit. I'm on there. I'm on Telegram, Chris Barnes one. Um, I'm very much passionate about just spreading this Eden idea and getting yeah. it to work on EOS. Like I'm, I'm a focus now uh is just to dedicate my time like i said i haven't been unemployed so i've got a lot of time so i'm just using my time and i'm just giving back and you know the universe is going to take it where it may and I, i'm i don't know it's uh it's it's all pretty cool i i, I love the whole thing um, and there's so much more we can do like eden you know eden can do governance as a service right there's this whole idea of the sx vault hack and there's some great ideas that came out from a guy named luca and aaron and the eos governance chat about just uh doing creating a EOS is a neutral infrastructure for dApps and kind of adding a time lock maybe to the system contract mm -hmm. and then remove this sort of God and do like an opt in sort of thing with some MSIGs and maybe certain contracts will deliberately have a delayed time lock on having yep. tokens pulled from the dApp. And then that information gets publicly, it's presented to users so they know there might be a delay so it can prevent some of these hacks. And then in that time lock, you can have an MSIG that is reviewed by BPs, or you could choose to select, you can use the Eden people. You could say, I believe that this Eden process selects for trusted people who we can trust to arbitrate on intentive code disputes and use the Eden MSIG as being a, you know, a requirement if you have a dispute and they get to be the ones to arbitrate. And that's presented to the, at the home screen of the DAP and the users know that this one, this DAP uses the Eden process as a trusted uh, third party for the MSIGs. You know, because Eden can do, we can do trusted auditors, we can do um, education services, the proxy, an insurance product maybe could be created if, if it passes in a trusted Eden security audit. Um, so there's, there's a lot of ways that this Eden process can really be leveraged on the EOS blockchain to, to create this trusted governance layer that is sorely missing. And that's where I think that even with how Telos does governance, they could still benefit from this yeah. process to select trust just for the arbitration value. Yeah, I think so as well. I think so as well. Well, Chris Barnes, again, first trial election winner. Thanks for coming on uh, for another kicking it session. I'm definitely going to have you back on because we got more things to talk about. It's going to be interesting to see how the second trial goes and ultimately uh, the real election, how that pans out. I'll have you on. To, yeah. to get your commentary on that as well. I got one more. Can okay. I say one more thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's one more, one more thing. I just forgot it. We're going to start um, in the, the, in the Eden on OS telegram chat. We're going to start mm -hmm. uh, three days a week doing like this open hangout zoom call mm -hmm. where it'll be Monday will be like an open mic. Wednesday will be what's no Thursday is going to be like a podcast of sorts uh, with okay. myself and Dominic Thomas, and we'll have other guests on. And then Saturday we'll do just like an open social again with some education. And the idea is to get the community members to start because it's digital community, hard to know people, and just yeah. get people to like start hanging out. And and we'll just give people like an open mic on the Monday, which will be six to eight p.m. Eastern. Um, you basically you'll be a, a set of sort of topics and questions will be presented in advance, and if you join expect that you're going to get called on to talk about one of these things and just talk to the group just get used to like this whole video talking thing anyway right which is not intuitive i you know right. trying to get better at it mm -hmm. so and it get get people to get to know each other you get to see each other they'll be recorded so other people can watch and start to build some of this community bond and cohesion and then um and then yeah thursday will be four to five p.m eastern uh, the podcast and then uh, and the saturday looks like about eight to nine thirty p.m so we're trying to do different times different days of the week and the goal is just to get people to join. If you're not even part of the Eden, like that's okay. Join, jump in. Like it's an open Zoom call. Ask some questions if you have them. Like this is a chance to, we, the idea of building community is so huge and it's so lacking. And we need to bring back this, this ability to trust each other again. And how do you develop trust? And like, it's just so missing. So I think that these will be an opportunity for people to do that in the community and people who are new to the community who, you know, if you want to become a member of Eden, you need to be invited and that means someone needs to kind of trust you so if no one knows you start put some effort in and get known so then people will invite you and be comfortable with vouching for you um so yeah anyway thanks man i, pr I appreciate yeah, that yeah so i'll leave a link in the description of this video guys for that telegram room is that the one you'll have to be a member to join first 
No, no, the telegram is just a telegram. Just the I mean, one. Okay. Yeah, the, the, you just need to know somebody who's in it. But we'll probably, like, I'll tweet out a link when it goes on. We're going to try to encourage as many people to join as possible. It's not going to be restrictive. And if someone's an arse on it, we'll kick them off or whatever. But yeah. um, but generally, I'll try to, I'll tweet about it. We'll, we'll try to spam the various EOS telegram chats uh, and just try to get as much engagement as we can. And it's just a test. We're just, I mean, it's, flying by the seat of her pants, just trying to see what happens. Right. So, uh, you know, we'll screw up. I I'm going to misspeak, I'm sure. And, and whatever, but, uh, and I'm not a rep of Eden, just a dude, just doing my thing. So, right. you know, take it easy. That's what we want again. Thanks again, Chris Barnes for checking in and kicking it with crypto blood. Make sure you guys like, share and subscribe and click that bell to receive more interviews like this. We out of here. People holla. If you want to see more videos and interviews like this from influential people in tech, finance, and sports, subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the bell to be alerted. And go a step further and join the YouTube membership area for early releases of videos like this. I'm out of here. Ha!